Well, I will continue our study this morning on who is the greatest in the kingdom of God. But before that, I want you to just go with me to Mark 11. We, again, talking about the local church. Mark's gospel chapter 11. You know, many times, wrong teaching can be very strong, even on the minds of those who have not believed. Wrong teaching. I remember years back, somewhere in the middle 90s, I was going on evangelism, as we all should do. And I was talking to someone who had not believed the gospel at that point. So as I was sharing the gospel with him, Today, the fellow is a minister of the gospel, I believe, because he became a minister of the gospel afterwards. Then he began to ask me, he's not yet a Christian, or wasn't yet a Christian. He began to ask me questions like, why don't some people cover their head? He's not saved. Cover their head? His own sins are not even covered. Then as I was trying to answer that, he started to ask, ask me why, I remember that day particularly, he asked me why a particular preacher in Nigeria wore Jerry Calls. You should know who he was referring to in the 90s. Oh, I think it's popular now, but in the 90s, you didn't know where Jerry Calls. <laughs> early, early 90s. Then he now asked about speaking in tongues. He's not yet a believer. He's asking about speaking in tongues. Of course, I tried to ask, answer his question right there. I remember it was under what you call fruit tree. He got born again and he got filled with the Holy Ghost. But why would a non-believer have such confusion? Maybe those who were on television, not maybe not everybody, but some on television, or who were known had passed across some information that didn't allow him to even understand the Word of God. Now, you must have read some people sometimes talk about something like, um, prayer is not going to change the nation. They say things like that. And they say it so confident. Sometimes you hear it from the pulpit. And they talk down on prayer. On the pulpit. And they say prayer is not going to change any nation. Then they tell you statistics. Nigeria is the one, the, Nigeria prays the most. And then they say, then the level of poverty is high. Some people tell you that, look at the, the churches are springing up everywhere instead of industries. Did they stop you from starting your own? Do you know, we make such statements. I don't have a problem with a non-Christian saying things like that, but not a believer. And you know, sometimes you have to respond this way because you'll be shocked at how ignorant some who are pastors are. I love them, I respect them, but I don't love and respect their ignorance. In Mark 11 and 17, Jesus was talking about the house of God. And Paul lets us know that the church is the house of God in 1 Timothy 3 and verse 15. He says to them, it taught sin, which means it was a teaching. Now what, what had happened here, he went into, look at your Bible, brother. I am not the Bible. He went into the temple. And John told us he drove them out with cords who were selling and buying. In other words, they were focused on two things. The economic activity. And secondly, they were focused on, you know, the sacrifices. They're not focused on the reason for the temple. Then he said to them, that's in John's rendering of this. He said, destroy this temple after three days, I'll raise it again. That already shows you that that temple was referring to the church. So he says here, I'm going to read the Max rendering. The same thing now in verse 17. Is it not written, my house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer. But you have made it a den of thieves. Now, den of thieves, they have explained to you, doesn't mean those who rob people physically of their material simply means impostors. In the Greek and the Hebrew word there, you've made it a place of impostors. That what should not be there is there. But notice what he says. What should be there is prayer. 
This is a house. Say with me, this is a house of prayer. I didn't hear, I didn't hear you. Say, this is a house of prayer. That's what we do in the church. They ask you, what is the meaning and reason for the church? You say prayer. So when someone says, it's not about prayer, it's telling you in other words, that it should not be church. That's what you have been told. So the church is for prayer. Now, listen to this. What is the prayer meant to achieve? You should ask yourself. What is it meant to achieve? And some have tied prayer to economic things. They've tied it to, so, well, with all our prayer, with all our prayer, why is our GDP low? Ah, did you ever read it in God's word that GDP is tied to prayer meetings? No. And you find some people on the pulpit. They will say, well, with all our prayer, people are poor. They say, look at that nation. They don't pray. The GDP is high. If I hear that from an economist, I'll understand what he's saying. If I hear the same thing from... Uh, uh, a, a, a normal analyst and critic, I understand what the person is saying. But when I hear it from a pastor, I will do like this. The question he hasn't answered, the nation you are referring to that they don't pray, how many people are in Christ? How many are born again? How many worship the Lord Jesus Christ? If the world comments about prayer, and doesn't see the economic value of prayer. That should not be your own confession. That should never be what you preach. That should never turn to your own sermons. That's the world. And what they believe. But that's not what the church should preach. The church should preach the reason for prayer. The biblical reason for prayer. It has nothing to do with the economic value of a nation. The economic value of a nation will be based on the economic skills and know-how of that nation. It, the level of churches or the number of churches does not, is not equated in the Bible to the level of financial increase or economic growth of that nation. That is not a biblical fact. The biblical fact is that prayer advances the cause of the gospel of salvation in every nation. That is why Jesus prayed much, his apostles prayed much, but in the four gospels they had many people who were poor. That had nothing to do with the prayer. Same in the book of Acts. And when they were praying for the leaders in the Bible, they were praying for salvation. In 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. When Paul urged Timothy, that first of all, there should be prayer, supplication, intercession, and giving of thanks. Should be made for all men. Then he says, for those who are in authority, for kings, for rulers, that we, believers, may live our lives in all honesty and godliness. Why? He says, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So the essence of our prayer for our nation, the essence of our prayers for our leaders is salvation. Why are we praying so much? For the cause of the gospel of salvation so that men, rich or poor, great or small, will be saved from sin and the hand of the enemy. You know, I've told many pastors this that I know. When the when United Nations tells you the problem of the world, a UNESCO, United Nations, UNICEF, and you use that to preach, then you are spiritually dull. The problem of the world is seen. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says. If you are a believer in the Bible, that's what you are going to say. What does the whole world need? The whole world needs a savior who will bring them into fellowship and true identity. 
which is only found in Christ Jesus. So, why are we having church? To advance the cause of salvation in the earth. Why are we praying much for that purpose to be fulfilled? Don't get it wrong. So, assuming somebody, a random speaker on, on, uh, in, in the news is talking, just like when uh, a particular church, I have to say this one, when they changed their leadership, and then they said, the son or uh, the daughter of the pastor will be the next pastor. And then people began to talk. Now, I don't have a problem with non-Christians talking. Those ones have a I mean, those who don't read the Bible will be preaching from the Bible. You know, it's a comedy. Some of us spend our whole day reading it. You read it when there's problems. Or you see it as a problem. Then you want to talk about it. You should keep quiet. But then there's no problem. They have a freedom of speech. I mean, but when a Christian is talking, and he begins to talk, begins to talk emotionally. Uh-uh, why should you know? It's family business. And talk like that. You, you say, you are probably either in a wrong church or a wrong member of a good church. You should know better than to open your mouth, like we say, bagadaciously. I make a comment like that. You talk from the scriptures. You talk from the word of God. And more so, if it's not your local church, keep quiet. They haven't forced you to come. And when they invite you to attend, they just say, I don't attend churches where the children of the pastors are pastors. That's fine enough. They go to where the children of the pastors are in the nightclubs. You probably get blessed there. But you see, just the same way, we should never equate prayer to the economic status of a nation. But I'm glad that every day people are getting born again in Nigeria. I said, I'm glad. I'm glad that the missionaries, their church is springing forth, right, center, left. And no, when I see a new church, not our own, I'm not unhappy, I'm excited. Hallelujah. Because it says, the whole earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters covers the sea. Glory to God. And that is happening already. I said it's happening already. Churches are all over the place. And I, some say, but then, why do we have um, much people, we should have so much crime and all that. Would you rather have no churches? We thank God for the churches. We thank God for prayer. And prayer will not cease. It will increase. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But please do not equate prayer to the economic value of a nation. I know the reason why it's being said because I think some churches have said come and pray so that you can prosper. You know, I think that's where the doctrine is wrong. If you stay in church and pray, you will not prosper. You will prosper outside the church. It's what you do outside the church that you prosper with. What you do in the church is for the sake of the gospel and salvation from sin and fellowship with the Father. Is that very clear? Hallelujah. Hallelujah.